I would just see this Jeepers Creepers guy stalking me on rooftops in my dream. And every time I'm looking at the rooftop, seeing him and I'm driving, right? And I'm like seeing him and he's just like teleporting from one rooftop to another rooftop to another rooftop. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. It's your girl, Mommy Stacy, and those of you who are new subscribers, welcome to my channel. This is a faith, beauty, and lifestyle channel. And those of you who are recurring subscribers, welcome, welcome back. So happy to see you guys. So today's gonna be something different. It's going to be my testy. And judging from the title, you already know what we're about to get into. I would say I probably recorded this video at least four times. And I, I could not upload it because although I know the Holy Spirit, Father God, has been ministering to me for some time now to it's time for my testimony to come out it's time it's time it's time it's time that's all i keep seeing it's time it's time like okay i hear you like i get it but it's still hard to talk about these things because it's just it's still it's still a healing process going on and this testimony is basically me displaying my brokenness to the world and how god fixed me how God healed me and how he's transforming my life um not only right before my eyes but right before everybody's eyes because he's doing a new thing not only through me but for me by me and he's using me as his vessel which I prayed for but when you ask God to use you it can get a little bit uncomfortable as a young adult navigating your way through life you never you never really notice how broken you are until you stop and take a look in the mirror until you stop and listen to life <laughs> growing up i would say now looking back at it i was definitely a troubled teen um i don't know why i would do the things that i would do I can't even tell you why I did half the things that I did. Do I regret doing the things I did? Yes, I did. Very much so. I try not to regret it because I feel like everything you do in life teaches you a lesson. And nothing in life is a coincidence. That everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. And there's even a scripture in the Bible that says, The Lord will turn the bad things for your good. So... I was I was smoking all the time. I was, you know, I was an abomination in God's eyes. I was laying up with the same sex. I was um I was suicidal. Ended up in a mental hospital. I was cutting myself. I was very depressed. see don't cry <laughs> um i was very anxious i felt very alone and even in a room full of people you still feel very alone you still feel very lost it's like i was looking for some type of answer somewhere in the midst of everything that i was doing but it's like no one had the answers, nothing. You don't even have the answers. You don't have the answers. You don't have the answers. These crystals don't have the answers. This weed doesn't have the answers. Nobody has the answers. <laughs> except for, I know I'm be corny, but except for this. That was the only thing that kept me here. That was the only thing that saved my life. I did grow up in a church, but I wasn't, I was a church goer. I wasn't a Christian. There's a difference. There's a church goer who just goes to church on Sundays, but doesn't live a lifestyle that's pleasing to God. 
and then there's a there's a believer there's a christian or a believer whatever you want to call yourself who actually doesn't just read the word or sing the worship songs but is devoted to christ devotes their life to christ implements what the word is saying you know i was just, i was just a church goer and i knew of christ i knew of god but i was still very much a prodigal daughter i was still very much out out there man we just out here i was just <laughs> i was living life on my terms trying to figure things out on my way i wasn't including god in my decisions it felt like the whole world was against me i was struggling with uh anger issues because i had a very short temper because of some stuff that happened to me when I was young. Um, I'm trying to stay happy. I I remember at the age of seven, I was that was my first time. Like, was it my first time? I was molested. Let's just keep it short and sweet. I was molested at the at the age of seven by a close family friend, and. It's the type of trauma that, here's the thing about trauma, and here's why therapy is very important, because people will go through trauma, and they'll just push past it as if it didn't happen, and they'll just push past it as if, oh, well, you know, that was five years ago, that was 10 years ago, that was 20 years ago, oh, well, I got a new job now, or I got a new boyfriend now, or girlfriend, or, oh, well, I moved to a different state now but none of those things really heal you from especially if you don't talk about it you're not going to heal from it because in the believe it or not talking about things is a form of deliverance and i remember when, i remember one of my one of my guy friends told me that actually um shout out to him because i was explaining this to him and he was like maybe that's what God wants you to do through this testimony. He wants you to talk about these things because although you were delivered from these demons and these these unclean spirits and all these things, all these transformation happen in you, there's probably still a residue of um that still that God wants to break off of you, still wants to deliver you from. So, yeah, shout out to you cuz but yeah, I was seven. It was a close family friend. And it happened when nobody was there. At first it started off as, oh, you know, do you want to play a little game? You know how these people are, you know, when people have like the spirit of pedophile and then the spirit of perversion, the spirit of lust. It has to be a spiritual thing because only... A unclean spirit would be able to jump on somebody's body and make them sexually attracted to a little kid. That's the only way. Because we can't just point the fingers and be like, oh, humans are just itty and they're just itty people and we just do itty things. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. No, the Bible says Ephesians 6, 12, that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Meaning our fight is not against each other. Our fight is not against flesh flesh and flesh and blood and blood. But it's against spiritual principalities in high places and princes of darkness, of rulers in the unseen realms. So I can't just say, oh, this, this person was an 80 person because you don't know what was going on in the spirit realm to cause them to do what they did. You know, I was look at things more than just the natural yeah it was like oh let's play a little game and then you know me being a naive little kid i followed him out the living room into the the other room and then next thing you know it was like okay well take off your clothes because that's how we're gonna play the little game and i was just you know i was like why do you need to take off your clothes to play a game I got swindled into it, manipulated into it, whatever. So, you know, you don't really think when you're a kid. You just, you hear game, you hear Disney, you hear TV, you hear 
whatever you just okay yeah yeah yeah, let's do it but that's when it happened and i just remember after it happening like literally in the in the middle of it happening my um uncle and my brother they were coming home and we kind of like heard them coming from a distance and that's when you know this person so and so stopped and got up and was like put your effing clothes on right now go to the bathroom go and i was just like oh my god like already like being on the floor as this is you know like happening to you and you're you're kind of like pinned down you don't really have like you don't know what's what you can't even like process what is this like what is going on so that's what i did i got up he got up he put his clothes on in like two seconds his shorts his shirt went back to the room i had to let nothing happen him me on the other hand i went to the went to the bathroom and i just like grabbed a bucket and i just began washing myself like i put water in the bucket i just began washing myself and 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 washing myself until i was like sore probably was red and everything and it's like no matter how many times you wash yourself you just never really feel clean you just still feel dirty i'm sorry and that was one of many times where uh stuff like that happened it just the next times it was just touching and it wasn't really like you know the very first time but even with that being said when the touching and all of and the, the all of that stopped this person would question me all the time you know pull me to the side and ask me does your parents know did you tell anyone about what i did does your mom know does your brother know does your dad know and i'll just be like Mm-mm, nope they don't know why and he would try to put fear in me and he would just tell me all the time like oh well because nobody's gonna believe you anyways if you were to tell them and if you do tell them they're probably i'm probably just gonna say you're lying and they're just gonna send you back to your country so nobody's gonna believe you so you might as well you might as well not even tell them because you're wasting your time because you're a kid and I'm just going to tell them, yeah, you're a liar. And he would question me all the time, every every couple times, once in a while. I would just be like, nope, nobody knows anything. I'm not saying anything. Please, just leave me alone. <laughs> so, after that happened, I, you know, I started first grade. Was it first grade? I was already in first grade. Yeah, I was like, I was in elementary school. I used to wear long sleeves all the time, long pants. I didn't like certain bras. I didn't like certain underwears. I basically dressed like a grandma. Let's just be honest, guys. I dressed like, I'm going to just be honest. I dressed like a grandma. I dressed like a grandma at school, long sleeves and just these these clothes that's like where'd you get this from like yeah my mom bought it yeah my mom dressed me but like (laughs) i would dress like an old person even like at church (laughs) but little i didn't know that was a trauma response to what i was going through i just didn't feel comfortable in my own skin another thing this person would do is after they would be finished touching me or whatever or They would always tell me, oh, yeah, you ugly. Yeah, you look ugly. Um, 
Your body's ugly. Your face is ugly. You're ugly. You're disgusting. You disgust me. So, I I was I thought I was ugly for a very long portion of my life. I did not. I was very insecure. I did not feel secure in myself because that seed being sown at such a young age that you know I'm already I already feel dirty, but now I'm ugly on top of it. So. Yeah, I was just like a little old person and I used to get bullied for it. Also, I was, you know, Caribbean. So my, you know, I, I had different customs and different, I was learning a different language. You know, I was learning English at the time when I moved here, seven going up. So my people made fun of me a lot and I used to get bullied in elementary school. But yeah. Fast forward to high school. <sighs> high school, high school, high school. I I love and I loved and hated high school. You know, I was very miserable. I was I was very troubled. It was not a pleasant experience. I would say I would only go to school because of my friends. Cause the friends that I had, they made me laugh. And they got, like, I was able to not be in my head so much. And, yeah, it's better than staying home all day. So, when I got to high school, I was by, I was around the wrong influences. Let's just, let's be real. Let's just be real. A lot of these high schoolers are not good influences. A lot of these young kids, they think they know the truth. They think they know what's real. They think they know the way. But do you really though? Do you really know the way? You know what I mean? When things when when you when things get stick in the mud, do you really know how to come out of things? No, you don't. I was hanging around a lot of bad influences, people that would be getting in fights, people that would, you know, be, you know, selling drugs. That's where I got most of my stuff from. Um, just a lot of people who are lost, just like me, you know, the blind leading the blind. It's clear that I didn't know who I was and neither did they. But, you know, we young, you know, just vibe, just have fun. That's really what it was until I started getting involved in the wrong situations. And it's all fun and games until you have to, your family have to be in a meeting with the school board district about whether or not they want to keep you in the school. It's you you know, it's all fun and games when you you showing up to your school and you're having fun with your friends until you're getting expelled or suspended and they're looking at your grades and they're looking at your absences and your truancy and they're looking at all these things and they're deciding whether or not it's a liability to keep you in this school. Because you're probably most likely not going to graduate if you keep going down the same path that you were going down. It's all fun and games until people want to jump you for no reason. You know, just because the boy that they like likes you. Or, you know, he said, she said, petty drama or smoking in the bathroom with friends. It's all fun and games until reality sits in and you got to wake up call to what <laughs> what the heck are you doing while you was away <laughs> while you was at school like obviously you ain't been doing nothing because look look at everything they're showing us so at home it got really bad too it was a lot of arguments it was a lot of fighting and throughout that time during high school I can honestly say it wasn't good at school it wasn't good at home it wasn't good. It wasn't good anywhere. And when I mean anywhere, I mean like even church. It was not it was not it was not good anywhere. And I started cutting myself. Even though I got in trouble and I got kicked out throughout those times, my sister they took they had taken my sister away. Because they were like, you're a bad influence. We do not want you to corrupt her. Because the path you're going down. 
it made me even more depressed that she was gone because I had to be here alone with these people that would just criticize me and judge me and belittle me and ridicule me for everything I did wrong, everything that was going on, when all along I just needed help. Nobody knew why I was acting out, why I had a short temper. All along I just needed someone to be there. And yeah, I had friends, I had people in my life that was there, but at some point you begin to feel like you're a burden to them. You begin to feel like you're bothering them. Or that they never really truly understand what you're going through. Because a lot of people in the world have it worse. But that still doesn't invalidate what the heck I'm going through. You know? So, yeah. It got really bad at home. A lot of arguments. If my sister was gone, my brother was gone. It was just me. It was just me. And I wasn't allowed to do a lot of things because of the choices that I made at that time knowing that it was just my my people doing the best they could to protect me and but still me being the rebel that I was I fought against it because it's like y'all don't understand y'all don't y'all just don't understand and I would run away from home I remember I ran away from home one time I ran away from home. I was smoking. When I was home, I was sad. I was crying. I was depressed. I was cutting myself. And I remember one day, my parents tried so hard. They really did try for me, though. I remember even after I ran away from home, when I had came back, they gave me, like, a whole sweet 16. And (laughs) I want to tell you they tried. Nothing could set me free from these demons but God but the blood of Jesus but the true living God the one that sits on the throne because I didn't know why I was doing the things that I was doing I didn't know why I was feeling the way that I was feeling I didn't know why I just didn't want to be here I didn't want to be here. I felt like there was no purpose in my life. I just felt like I was a burden to everyone. I just felt like I wasn't, I ain't ish. And even after the Sweet 16, nothing really changed. Because a lot of things are more spiritual than they are natural. And also I'm navigating through these traumas. I don't know how to navigate through these traumas. I don't know. I don't know, you know? So, yeah. I remember one time, it was just me and my mom in the house. We had gotten into an argument. If it's not, yeah, you know, butting heads with my, my people, my my, then it's me. Just, I got into an argument with her. I don't even know what we were arguing about. Satan came in the mix and he... Put a confusion between us, okay? That's what happens for real in the spirit realm. And I remember, I'm not going to tell you what I, I'm not going to tell y'all what I used, but you know, I drank it and my mom, she's the one who found me because I was ready. I was, I was done. I was ready to go. Okay. Like, listen, God I gave it my best. I did the best that I could do. I tried really hard for you here. I really did. But it just seems like it's never going to end. It seems like it's never going to stop. It seems like I can't get a break. So that's what I did. I drank what I drank. And my mom found me. And she called 911. And she was panicking. She was freaking out. 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 And, you know, my mom could barely speak English. So it was like, she didn't even know what to say. How to talk to these people. And I'm really trying. 
she was freaking out and she called them the ambulance came as soon as they can they took me to the hospital they pumped my stomach out put me on antibiotics fluids all of that and i'm thinking okay Maybe this time when I go home, things could be different. Or when I go back to school. Or just anywhere, things could be different. And this was all happening 15, 16, 17. Around that time, 18 even is when. Yeah, 18 is going to be another story. (laughs) But. No, it wasn't going to get any better when I got home. Why? Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Why? Because this is a spiritual fight. We are fighting a spiritual war and the enemy is after our minds. If he can get us to conform to whatever idea he wants to put on us over this world, over our minds, over our family, over our bodies, over our people then he wins. If he can get us to not believe in God, that God has a plans for us, God has plans to prosper, not to harm us, plans to set us free, plans to give us abundance that he knew us before we were even in our mother's wombs. If he can get us to think that we don't matter, that we're not important, that nobody cares about us, that we're useless. If he can get us to think that and actually believe that over ourselves, then he wins. And he don't got to do nothing else. He don't got to do nothing else but watch us self-destruct. And watch us watch us self-sabotage. So after the hospital, they had took me to a mental hospital. I didn't know. I don't know how. I think my parents signed for them to take me or know the hospital has this thing where they take people who try to commit suicide to a mental hospital. But the mental hospital that I had went to was like a kid-friendly one. It was like a... I went to Lakeside. It was a the kid part, though. And I was there, and it was so... It was like... It was so weird. We basically dressed like... Y'all have watched the show, Orange is the New Black. I'm not promoting that show, but y'all know how they dress with the the beige uniform. That's how we dressed at that um, place. And it was just me, other girls who tried to do the same thing as me, and other guys who tried to do the same thing as me, whether it was try to get in front of a bus, try to jump in front of a bus, in front of a car, whatever it was. They were there, okay? We were all there right and we all had set time to wake up set time to go to sleep set time to eat our lunch set time to eat our dinner set time to take our depression pills and every day was the same and if you're lucky you get phone calls from your parents and from people outside or you get to go out outside in the yard the backyard and get some sunlight but that wasn't an everyday thing after the mental hospital, it was really sad in there because nobody, none of my people wanted to talk to me while I was in there. Like, I used to get so sad because all the other kids' parents would call them and check up on them. I think I probably disappointed my people too much. So it made them mad. They they didn't give two about calling me. <laughs> That's so funny. No, it's not. But... Anyway, so after that, I went back home. My mom had picked me up and, and you know, um, and I finished the school year. I did everything I could to get my grades up and graduate. Okay, I graduated. Thank God. So, but that was just, that was just one, a chapter of my high school life. After graduation, but wait, there's more. After graduation, I told you, God really was with me because ain't no way I should have been here. I started working at this this job, and I think I was like 18 or 19. 
and I met this I met this girl we're gonna call her B and at first I wasn't looking for a relationship when I started working at this job because it's not how it always starts oh I'm not looking for nothing I'm not looking for a relationship and then you find someone and then yeah but yeah I wasn't looking for a relationship for real though and me and her we kind of hit it off we had like great like we kind of had like really good chemistry and it wasn't just like a sleeping thing for me like a se thing for me that's not why that's not why me and b got in a relationship i got in a relationship with b although i know i knew what the bible said you know i never read the scriptures now i have but my mom would always tell me, you know, I was raised in the church. I was a church goer, like I said, but I wasn't living for Christ. I wasn't living the word. I was doing what I please, what I want to do. That's what I was doing, right? And it wasn't helping. How was how's doing? How's you? How's doing? How, what you want to do? Been been looking so far? Has it been working out for you? If it hasn't been looking out for you, give your life to Christ. Just give it a rest, guys. But that's how it was, and. You know, I knew what it said about, you know, my mom would always tell me because she always suspected in the back of her mind that I didn't like boys. <laughs> and she had every reason to suspect because I never brought a guy home to meet my parents till this day. I never brought a guy home to meet my parents. I barely had like long, I mean, I did have long term relationships, but they didn't know about it. And it was always toxic. So it's like, how is, how's doing? How's you? How's doing? How, what you want to do? Been been looking so far? Has it been working out for you? If it hasn't been looking out for you, give your life to Christ. Just give it a rest, guys. But that's how it was. And you know, I knew what it said about you know. My mom would always tell me because she always suspected in the back of her mind that I didn't like boys. <laughs> And she had every reason to suspect because I never brought a guy home to meet my parents till this day. I never brought a guy home to meet my parents. I barely had like long, I mean, I did have long-term relationships, but they didn't know about it. And it was always toxic. So it's like, this isn't even brag worthy. I can't even brag about this. This relationship is useless, you know? But with her, it was different. And even though I never, like, I introduced her to my mom because my mom worked at that job. But I was still in the closet, you know. Although I, I was really attracted to women sexually and God delivered me from that as well. I was really attracted to them. I was still very scared because of how Caribbean parents are. And we all know Caribbean parents don't play that. You gonna come around here with that stuff around my house, be ready to pack your bags and go somewhere else. Be ready to get kicked out. That's how my parents were. So, yeah, me and B, we started off really good. You know, I really felt like this person saw me. We shared the same ideas um we shared similar experiences you know we like we kind of went through some bs in our lives you know but that was not my first same sex relationship because if i can be honest let me be honest in this testy let me be honest in this testy okay i can honestly say right now god's been working with me on this and through this and I've gotten way better but I still felt dirty when a guy would touch me I didn't feel comfortable with men even if it was just like how do I describe this even if it was just like a oh good job good job from a guy I would smile it off and <laughs> I just felt so dirty after that. Like, oh my God, why do I feel like this? 
I didn't feel very safe with men in the presence of men and I felt like a lot of the men in my life failed me I felt like a lot of the men in my life failed me I felt like God even failed me because no one was there to protect me where were you where were you when I was going through what I was going through? Where were you when I didn't have a voice? When I couldn't speak up for myself? And that's also why I, I struggled with a short temper and was taking drugs and popping pills and smoking all the time and getting in trouble a lot at school because I was not only fighting demons, but I was like these traumas, these demons that were attached to the trauma. I didn't know how to fight these things. So, yeah, this person made me feel seen because they weren't objectifying me. It wasn't just ass and titties to them, you know? The relationship was never meant to be because later on it did get it did get really negative. It did get really bad. It did start taking a toll on not only my mental health, but this person's mental health too. And I wasn't perfect, yeah, but... You know, I really put my best forward, you know? And this person just... Mm, precious Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But when I knew God was calling me out of this relationship was when every time I would go to church, I began to feel like I'm being judged. I began to feel like I'm being watched. I began to feel very shameful, very guilty, very convicted. Because in my heart, I knew I wasn't living, I wasn't living right. I knew that I'm going to come to this Sunday service and raise my hand up and pray. But as soon as I walk out that door, I'm going to be back in there. Uh -huh. I'm quiet. Stop playing. <laughs> because that's, that's really like, that's, that's, that was my, it's like, I'm living for me. I was living for me at the time. I was not living the word of God. I was not living for Christ like I am now. Okay. And I remember one time I was doing the do with this individual, with B. And you know how girls do the do. We usually use different things to help us. And I remember I was the one being the dominant this time while we were doing what we were doing and i was in the back okay and i was doing i was doing what i was doing y'all and i just began to feel really disgusted i began to feel so mortified so embarrassed because even though it was me and her it was private no one was there no one was there i still i started to feel i started to feel like really gross i started to feel really nasty and i never told her that because i didn't want her to feel insecure about her body because it was nothing she was doing wrong i didn't want her to feel dirty or, or weird just i don't want her to feel anything weird because like, to me, she was perfect. Everything about her was perfect. Like, I put this person on a pedestal. I worship the ground they walk on. Okay? I When I love someone, I, I give my everything. Like, I'm here. I'm not going nowhere. Um, but I really started to feel like really, hmm. And I couldn't put a finger on. That's conviction. When you start to feel ashamed in the middle of a sin or doing the sin that you're committing, that's God convicting you. That's God making you look at yourself in front of a mirror. Are you happy with yourself right now? I didn't know that at that time, but you know, I ignored it because it's like, well, she's fine, I'm fine, we're happy, we're gonna end up moving together. I'm gonna leave not only my family, my sister who got back, my church, 
all of my friends in this state i'm gonna go we're gonna run away we're gonna go live together i'm gonna be moving with my bae my boo my everything we're gonna get married we're gonna live the rest of our lives together because i don't care about nobody else nobody else has ever made me feel this safe nobody else have ever made me seen this scene before my entire life no guy has ever made me feel this scene before and understands me this much so that's what i was that's what i was thinking and but god had other plans god had other plans and you know that bible scripture that says man makes their plans but the lord directs their footsteps and so you can make your plan sure that's fine but god's plan will always prevail dead or alive it will always prevail so i was making my we, we were making plans all right but god was like okay all right that's cute but wa watch this oh sure watch this <laughs> okay i began to start having demonic dreams i y'all ever seen that movie jeepers creepers the third movie the third movie the third oh jeepers creepers and y'all actually get to see how he looks underneath the hoodie y'all i began to start having these dreams of me getting into a car accident and i i always was prophetic you know because ever since i was little i would have dreams of the apocalypse i would have dreams of things that are talked about in the book of revelation i would tell my mom it i would tell so i was always prophetic but i didn't know I didn't know I was. I didn't know that that was a thing. I didn't know. But <laughs> I would just see this Jeepers Creepers guy stalking me on rooftops in my dream. And every time I'm looking at the rooftop, seeing him and I'm driving, right? And I'm like seeing him and he's just like teleporting from one rooftop to another rooftop to another rooftop and i'm just like oh my god as soon as i turn my head i would see that i'm about to hit a car and there would other be time there would be other times where i'm in my car and i would be just i would see myself in my car driving my own car as in like i'm driving my life i'm directing my life i am the author of my story that's what that meant and as I'm driving my car, I would see I would see that same demon open my car, my passenger side, and come sit in my passenger side next to me. And I didn't even invite them in. Me thinking I didn't invite them in was exactly the issue. Because the Bible does say if a man lays down with a prostitute, that the two end up becoming one. So who you lay down with and who you fornicate with and who you sleep with and who you, you are becoming one to that person. What does that mean? Their bloodline, the generational curses that they have on their family, the generational curses that they have on themselves, whether it's the spirit of poverty, the spirit of sickness, infirmity, whether it's the spirit of addiction, whether it's the spirit of adultery. You laying down is saying to God, okay, I'm making a, a contract, a covenant with this person and everything that they have inside of them and everything that they are. So that's why that person, that's why that demon was able to sit in the passenger seat in some of my dreams. And I'll just see my, like, I didn't invite you here. Why are you here? It opened the door and it sat next to me anyways. The third dream that really got me fighting and praying and praying more and fighting and praying to God was when one time I had a dream and I saw my mom and a, another lady from my church. I didn't, I'm not familiar. Like I'm not close to this lady, but they came and they came up to me in the, in my, in the bathroom in my dream. And they said to me, Oh, such and such want to talk to you. They're outside. I don't remember the name of the demon, the unclean spirit, but I do remember they came up to me and they told me he wants to talk to you in my dream. And I was like, who's that? 
And it was like, he wants to talk to you about B. And I was like, why does he want to talk to me about B? He wants to make a deal with you for B. I was like, are you serious? And they were like, yeah, are you going to go talk to him? And I was like, no, I'm not going to go talk to him. I'm not making any deals. And then they were like, are you sure? Because he's going to be angry that, you know, you're messing with B. <laughs> are you serious right now? I was like, and now looking back, I can understand, you know, the spiritual aspects of what was going on in, in me and this person's relationship. And I can understand now. <laughs> but at the time... I was like, what the heck? All these weird dreams, all these things happening. I didn't know. But, you know, even though I had my back turned towards God, even though I was living for me, even though I was doing what I wanted to do, even though I felt lost, I felt alone, I didn't know who I was or who even I wanted to be, I was not happy. I felt unworthy. I felt dirty. I felt not beautiful sometimes. Even though I was going through all of those things I was going through. And I felt like all the men in my life failed me. My brother, my dad. Because no one was there to protect me. And teach me and hold me. Instead, I got ridiculed. And judged. And belittled. And casted. God still was there Jesus was always by my side he never left me he always always helped me overcome these battles and these trials and tribulations that I was facing that I didn't understand and that's why I gave my life to him literally in 2020 and I was like, I'm done fornicating. Not even with the opposite sex, even with the same sex. I'm I'm not going back to my lifestyle. I'm not going back to drinking and popping pills and cutting my I'm not going back to being this angry Stacy. I'm not going back, God. Like I'm not I don't care how hard life get, I'm not going back to that girl. He delivered me, guys. He helped me be free by having People cast demons out of me. He he showed me the plans that he's always had for me. The plans for my life. The beautiful big dreams. You know, when you're a little kid, you think, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then when you get older and older and older, you realize, reality, you're not going to do that. No, you're going to be here and clock in. He showed me like, no, no, my child. No, I'm a king. And you are my daughter. Therefore, that makes you royalty. Therefore, I'm going to take care of you. Therefore, you will lack nothing. In my father's house, there is many mansions. Ain't nothing impossible for me. Is there anything impossible for my God? I have plans for you. I knew you. I know the very numbers of hair in your head. I'm going to take care of you. I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. God did. God is. Jesus Christ. Jesus. And ever since 2020, I've really just been like so in love with him because that was when 2020 I got out of that relationship. I was heartbroken. I was shook. I was shaken. I was torn apart how it ended because it was like, wow, like really after everything I I have everything I did. Another bad relationship. Another another good one, God. Just great. That's exactly what I needed. But he helped me through it. And not just through that, but through many other things after that. And that's why I, even though it took me like four times to record this testy, this time, hopefully this time, this this one gets uploaded. So, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe.
I will be back with another video. A lighter one, more positive, happy one, hopefully. And, um, yeah, if you haven't given your life to Christ yet, tap on the description box. I'm going to have a prayer there to give your life to Christ. And just try him out. Try him out. See what he's about. You know, obey his commands. Fast. Actual fasting. Pray. Devote your time to him. Just an hour a day. And watch how he's going to transform your life, guys. Right before your eyes. Watch how he's going to prepare that table. And, and give you the honor and all the glory. Just because you're his child. Just for nothing. Just because. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope this isn't too long of a testy. But yeah, I love you guys with the love of Christ. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye. Safe and sound.